Hey everybody, welcome to Practical Alchemy. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to create custom Halloween cookie cutters in Fusion 360 that you can 3D print. This is going to be a really fun beginner's tutorial using some simple sketches, extrusions, and chamfers. It's a great way to practice some basics. And even if you have never used Fusion 360, I think this is a totally doable project. Now, if you have never used Fusion 360 before, I may suggest jumping over to my beginner tutorial and at least watching the first few minutes so you can familiar yourself with the interface. But beyond that, follow along and we will make some cookie cutters. All right, the first step is to set up your workspace. So I'm going to start a new design file. The first thing that I'm gonna do is check my document settings to make sure that everything is in inches. And I also like to come up here to the preferences tab. And under general, I like to set my default modeling orientation with Z up. It's what I've been using for years and it's what I'm most familiar with. Now that I've got the workspace set up, the next thing I'm going to do is create a reference sketch, which I'm going to use as the outline for all of the cookie cutter files that I create from this point forward. So I'm going to come here to the sketch menu to create a new sketch. I'm going to select the top plane here. And now I'm going to create a simple rectangle. And here in the sketch palette, I'm going to select a center rectangle and I'm going to constrain that center point to the origin. All right, next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to grab these two sides and I'm going to constrain them as equal because I want this to be a square. And lastly, I am going to drag up the dimension and set this at four inches. This is going to be the bounding box in which I am going to size all of my cookie cutter sketches. The next thing that I'm gonna do is come up here and create an offset sketch. So select the, that outline and I wanna drag this in to negative 0.35. And then I'm going to select all of these lines and convert them to construction geometry. The reason that I've done this is I wanna make sure that whatever the silhouette of the cutter itself is, I have a border outside of it, which I can use to create the frame for the cookie cutter. So once I finish this sketch, I'm gonna come in here and I am going to rename it as our reference sketch frame. And hit okay. Now that you've got your reference frame in place, the next thing that you need to do is gather some reference artwork. This artwork could be something that you find or something that you create. For this tutorial, I did some simple sketches in Procreate. You could also draw it out by hand and grab a picture with your phone. Ideally though, you want your image to be simple. You wanna have a very clear and simple silhouette and you wanna make sure to avoid any small pieces or bridges that are going to snap off easily when you are making this into a cookie. Regardless of how you create your reference image, in order to get it into Fusion 360, what you're going to do is come up here to the insert menu and click on canvas. From there, you are going to navigate over to where you've got this stored on your computer. Simply click on the image and then it's going to ask you which face you want it to be placed in. I'm going to turn off this sketch for a second so that I can select this top plane, turn my reference sketch back on and now I'm going to scale up my JPEG so that it fits nicely into the inner area of my frame and hit OK. Now with my reference image in place, I'm going to create a new sketch also on the same top plane. And I'm going to use my sketch tools to create my artwork. For this bad example, I was actually able to use the fit spline to create the entire object, but based off of the geometry of your design, you may have to mix and match and play around with different tools to create one closed outline. 
If you are struggling with creating your own geometry inside of Fusion 360 or your design is getting a bit complicated, you can also explore creating or finding an SVG or DXF file. SVGs and DXF files can be found for purchase a lot of places on the internet. And if you wanna create them yourself, you can explore programs like Vectinator on the iPad, or you can explore using Adobe Illustrator, which is what I use to create vector files that I then export as DXF files for use in Fusion 360. If you are creating your own vector files, my main recommendation would be to try to keep the line art as simple as possible. Try to use very big, soft, sweeping curves, minimize the number of control points that you have, and make sure that your corners are terminating either in a radius or in a sharp corner. You want to avoid having real small like jumps in your artwork because it's going to make it more difficult when you import to offset those types of curves. Now, if you are interested in using my DXF files, I have created a DXF file package with all of the Halloween themed designs that I've created, and I've put them up for purchase on my Gumroad page, which can be found in the video description. These DXF files are free sized to fit in the four inch bounding box, and I've already tested them to make sure that they import cleanly into Fusion 360. All right, so jumping back into our tutorial here. To import your SVG or DXF file, you're going to follow the same basic process. You're going to come up here to the insert menu, insert DXF. It's going to ask you for the sketch or plane, which I'm going to select here. Then I'm going to navigate over to the working files and I'm going to import that sketch. All right, now with that imported, I am going to turn my reference sketch frame back on, and you can see that makes it very easy to drag this over to the right place and set this in the right location. And then when I'm happy with it, I'm going to hit OK. Now that I have my sketch geometry, whether it be via uh, JPEG or via an existing DXF file, I can turn my sketch frame off for a second. The next thing that I'm going to do is I need to create two simple sketch offsets. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna create a new sketch. And again, I'm going to use this top plane here. All right, I'm gonna turn my pumpkin DXF sketch back on and I'm going to project this sketch geometry into this new sketch. So come up here to the create menu, click on project, project, and now I want you to select all of the edges to your pumpkin geometry. Now that I've got that, I can turn my DXF file off and I'm just going to use this new sketch. The reason that I did that is because I don't want this sketch to become altered in any way. I just wanna use it as a reference point. I wanna make sure that it's preserved so that I can use it for other things later on without working destructively. The next thing that I wanna do is create an offset from this silhouette in order to create the side walls of my cookie cutter. So I'm gonna come up here to click the offset command, and then I'm going to offset that by 0.06 inches and hit okay. Now you wanna make sure that this offset is to the outside of your original geometry so that that way what is inside is what is going to actually be cut. You don't want to modify that geometry. You want this to be the outside of the cut wall. Now I'm going to do one more offset and I'm going to again, select all of the geometry in the chain, pull this out to 0.35 inches and hit okay again. This is going to be the outer frame of my cookie cutter, which is going to provide some additional rigidity. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna hit finish sketch and my sketch geometry is complete. Next, I need to create two extrusions, one for the cutter and one for the frame. So first I'm gonna hit extrude and I am going to select this inner frame here and it should turn blue and you are going to extrude this up by 0.65 inches. And that is going to be the cutting wall of our cookie cutter. Now let's say for a second that that did not work for you. You came into the extrude menu and you were not able to select this edge. What that means is that you have a break somewhere in your geometry. 
All right, so you at some point you don't have closed geometry and you can go through one by one and select that. So if you select this inner surface and this is not closed, that means you have a break in this geometry somewhere. If that works, next is to go out one. And if this is not showing up, then you have a break in this geometry somewhere. You're gonna need to go back into your sketch, find that broken edge, and create just a very simple uh, line to jump it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this sketch back on, and I'm going to create another offset for the frame wall. This is going to provide a little rigidity to my cookie cutter so that it does not warp and it also gives me something to hold on to when I'm actually using it. I'm just going to drag this up to 0.1 inches. I am going to want to make sure that the operation type is set to join so that it joins this body to the existing cookie cutter and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to rename this sketch to pumpkin cutter. And I'm also going to come in and name my new create a body as a pumpkin cutter as well. All right, and this is starting to look a lot like a cookie cutter. There's just one more detail that we wanna add here. So let's turn this sketch off so we can hide it. The last thing that I wanna do is add a slight chamfer to this edge to make this wall a little bit thinner as we cut through the dough, making it more of a cutting edge versus just kind of a smushing edge. So we're gonna come up here, we're going to go to chamfer, and we are going to select this entire chain around the edge. Now, once the entire chain is selected, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this type from uh, equal distances down to two distances. I'm gonna set the top edge to 0.02. And I am going to set this sidewall to 0.15. Sidewall to 0.15. And as you can see here, that means that it's going to set this edge in by 0.2 and it's going to drop this edge by 0.15. And just like that, we are done. Now, before I end this tutorial, I want to spend a few minutes explaining what I've done with this chamfer. Now, if you remember from a few minutes ago, this cutter was set to a wall thickness of 0.06 inches. And I have now created a chamfer with a top edge of 0.02 inches, which means that in most cases, in some points it thins out a little bit, but Generally speaking, this top surface is 0.04 inches thick. Now I am running a MakerBot 2 FDM printer with a 0.04 inch nozzle, which means that that's about as thin as I want to go in terms of wall thickness. I know you can push it a little bit thinner, but as a general rule, that's about as thin as I want to go. Um, before I start getting some jagged edges in my cookie cutter. Now, your mileage may vary, and I definitely encourage you to experiment with different wall thicknesses and different chamfers to find uh, the right balance that works for you and for your printer. And with that, we're done. You are ready to print. All you have to do now is export this file as an STL, drop it into your slicer, Print it out, cut your dough, bake, and decorate. It really is pretty simple and straightforward. You can use this exact same process to create your own custom cookie cutter library. And if you'd like to use my files, you can jump over to my Gumroad page where I have my STL files and DXF files available for purchase as a single package. You can find the link to that in the description below. It certainly helps out the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. And with that, we are going to close out today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you had any questions, thoughts, or topics for future videos, leave those in the comments section below. And if you want to continue learning with Practical Alchemy and stay up to date as I release new videos, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween, and I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to hit save.